Hello again and welcome to our latest video here on the YouTubes. My name is Jay Tate. I am publisher at AuburnSports.com and I thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this quick little video recapping what Auburn did in its win against Davidson. That was the second win of the year for Auburn. They're 2-2 two and two now. Well, 2-0. and oh. They're 2-4-2, two, two, I should say. And we'll take a look at their upcoming game against South Alabama in Mobile. Before we get started, I do want to give a shout out to all of our military personnel watching this today's veterans day and we are all very grateful uh, for your service uh, everybody in all the armed forces uh, america rocks america kicks ass and the reason it kicks ass is because there's been so many folks who have defended our country and who have been there for us in our time of need and i thank you very much we all do and uh, keep kicking ass you guys are the best all right moving on to the win auburn wins 76 66 in annapolis they were actually playing at the naval academy in like a one-off like tournament or festival or jamboree or whatever you want to call it against Davidson. We'll take a look at the shot chart again. Auburn wins this game by 10. And nothing unusual or spectacular there. Auburn is the kind of team that either goes to the hole or they're taking a three. There's not much mid-range to it. Uh, you can see there uh, they took one a mid-range shot uh, at the top. I know that one was a deflection to Okoro that he just said, hell with it, I'm going to put it up and hit it. And there were two more there on the flank. Uh, those are usually not designed to go that way. Uh, but if they're late in the shot clock, you never know what happens. Uh, in general, Auburn was much better at the cup. I want to say in the last game, it was like 63% in that blue circle near the hole. Uh, this time, 74%. Much better at finishing in transition. And the numbers that way were much, much better. Let me uh, slow this some down. Let's take a look at the next slide. The top players in that win against Davidson. I thought Isaac Okoro was tremendous. He was just too quick off the dribble for anybody at Davidson to defend straight up. He finishes with 17 points, and in the plus-minus, he ends up plus 14. That means that when he's on the floor, Auburn was 14 points better than Davidson. Uh, that's a pretty good number right there. And continues to be his best skill uh, from a points-per-possession standpoint, which is provided to us by Synergy Sports, uh, is his spot-up shooting. It's a common theme among Auburn players. I mean, they've got a lot of good spot-up shooters, but Okoro is one of them. Uh, he's had five possessions where he's been a spot-up shooter, and he's turned that into seven points for a 1.4 points for, per possession. Uh, it's probably not a big enough sample size yet to say he's going to be really, really good at that going forward. I think he has a lot of things he's good at, but so far it's been spot-up shooting. Daniel Purifoy was good again, 14 points on 5 of 10 shooting. I want to say he was like 3 of 5 from 3, too. He has a really sweet stroke. Six rebounds. Four turnovers, there is some area for uh, improvement there for him, but uh, D'Angelo's been good this year. Anthony McLemore, who was not very good until the last, I think, eight minutes of the game. Uh, yeah, there you go. Seven minutes, seven points during the final eight minutes. He finishes with five rebounds and three blocks. We've kind of been waiting for Matt, for Mac, or Ant, as they call him among the team, to kind of pick it up. You know, he got that nasty injury against South Carolina, hell, almost like a year and a half ago. He wasn't the same player last year. He just seemed tentative and timid. And then he starts off in the first game this year playing that way, and I thought, here we go again. But man, he really turned a corner there in the last eight minutes of this last game against Davidson, and I think there's a chance that maybe he's going to get back. At least you've got that, and you know he can do it. That's a step in the right direction. His best skill continues to be uh, picking and rolling. Uh, four possessions for him so far this season with six points, 1.5 PPP. That's really good if he can keep that going, and that's something he's been good at in the past. He kind of likes to set a pick, Roll backwards, usually to the three-point line, take that pass, and then put it up. And he's got that quick little flip. It's almost like a flip shot he does, and uh, it's been working. And Javon McCormick had a solid game, 10 points on 5 of 12 shooting, probably too many shots for 10 points, but whatever. Uh, five rebounds, which is tremendous for a point guard. Five assists and zero turnovers. That's a big improvement from the way he played against Georgia Southern. He was much, careful, uh, much more careful with the ball. He valued possession better. That's something I'm sure Pearl was crawling his ass about. And he, I thought he came through. He's a much better facilitator in the game against Davidson. And his best skill so far, at least on the scoring end, is transition. Uh, seven uh, possessions for him and nine points, 1.27. That's a good number right there. So uh, those are the top players at Auburn right now, uh, the way they played against Davidson and the kinds of things that they like to do in general. We'll take a look at the roster grid. Uh, not much change here, and this is a pretty accurate representation of exactly what they've been doing from a personnel perspective. You've got the starters there on the left, uh, Samir and Jamal. You know, Samir will play some combo. He was doing some of that uh, in the Davidson game, too. Really good at it, too. I think this is going to be a really big thing for him. 
I've told you guys before, you know, when he was on the scout team uh, during his transfer year, he came over from VCU. He played that role. He's like a combo guard for the scout team, and he was really good in that role. And you guys are thinking, JG, who cares what he did on the scout team? I mean, does anybody really care? Well, I did. And he was wearing them out. And then last year, he couldn't really do much of that because he had Jared and Bryce. You don't need to. I mean, Samir was just kind of a spot-up shooter to help out uh, when needed. Now he's being relied upon to be a primetime performer, and he can play shooting guard. He can do some combo guard work, and I think you're really starting to see him get unlocked as far as all the things he can help with. Jamal Johnson uh, didn't have a great game, but it's, it's what's weird about him is he just goes through periods where you don't even notice he's on the court, and then he'll come through. Efficiency-wise on the scoring end, he's pretty good. They don't give him a lot of chances, but when they do give him a chance, he makes it happen. Uh, Devin Cambridge uh, was shortened a little bit because of foul trouble. I think he had eight minutes uh, in the Davidson game, but hit a couple buckets again, finished with six points, and he's been a good little player, number 35 off the bench. He seems really fit. Uh, he gets out in transition and doesn't get tired, and uh, he's been nice. has been a nice addition. And, of course, Anthony McLemore backs up at power forward and center now. Uh, Baba Tunde, otherwise known as Stretch, I don't. he hasn't played yet. Jalen Williams hasn't played yet. Uh, Alan Flanagan played a little bit in this last game, really didn't make much a, uh, much of a, a dent in what they were doing. And then Turbo or Ty Jones, uh, the backup point guard, I guess the third point guard, um, he got a few minutes, but again, they're, they're going really slow with him. They don't really need him. Uh, they go with Javon a lot. Samir can play combo, and they also were running uh, a couple sets where Purifoy was playing kind of a de facto point guard too and he's a he can be a good player as long as he's not loose with the ball i think sometimes he just gets absent-minded about what he's trying to do out there and that's when he gets the ball get away but when he's actually concentrating on being a facilitator he's pretty good at it let's move along to uh, the team dna update so these are the things that auburn does well on the scoring end uh, this is data collected and distributed by synergy sports someone we have partnered with here at auburnsports.com uh, to no one's surprise, spot-up shooting continues to be Auburn's best skill on the offensive end. 38 possessions, they've turned that into 38 points for 1.00 points for, per possession, and that puts them in the 78th percentile nationally. Uh, I want to say they were in the 85 to 90 percentile on this particular type last year, but it's easy to do that when you've got Bryce uh, playing the way he did and Jared too. So uh, 78%, I think, at this point in the season with this team is pretty good. That's something they're going to be really good at, and – it's been carrying them to this point. A pick and roll ball handler. That's where Javon comes in. That's where Dangel comes in. Uh, Samir does some of that as well. It's basically where the ball handler goes around a screen, neither drives or shoots. Uh, something that Jared was really good at last year. They have 16 possessions for 14 points, 0.875 PPP. That puts them in the 68 percentile nationally. Again, that's somewhere where Auburn was in the 90s last year. So they're going to want to see that move up a little bit. But again, they're getting just getting started. Getting started. Uh, post up, 14 possessions for 11 points so far. Basically just feeding Austin Wiley. Okoro has done a couple post ups. I think he will continue to do that depending on his defensive matchup. I think he's capable of doing it. But that's mostly Austin. And Austin had some trouble in the Georgia Southern game. He was able to get the ball generally. But between getting the ball and then getting the shot off, he lost the ball too much. He was better about it against uh, Davidson, but that was a team that didn't have the kind of size that he had. It was They were had a hard time repelling his size, and he was better at it. I just want to see what he can do against a really good, big post defender. Uh, don't think we're going to see that here against South Alabama coming up, but that day is coming, and I think Austin needs to get a little bit better for that. And then transition is another thing Auburn's trying to be good at. Uh, 38 possessions so far, 32 points for a .842 PPP. That puts him in the 25 percentile. That is not good. That's nowhere near good enough. Uh, but keep in mind something. They were at 14 percentile uh, through the Georgia Southern game. They were atrocious in that game. In this game against Davidson, they really pushed the tempo. I thought they, they went out and said, we're going to run the ball, and when we get a chance, we're going to push it. And that's what they did, and they were a lot better. Uh, I want to say their number for the Davidson game was like a 40 percentile or something like that. So they're pulling it up slowly but surely. And that bottom box there just kind of tells you where they are. It just, you know, there's two types of scoring, really, transition or half court. And they're at the 25 percentile, as I mentioned, in transition. They're 78% in the half court. So they're obviously a much more efficient scoring operation when they're in the half court offense, primarily because Dangel's such a good spot up shooter. Uh, Javon has been a good pick and roll guy. Uh, Samir's a good spot-up shooter. Anthony's been a, a good spot-up shooter. They have a lot of guys like that. So when they run stuff in the half court, they're pretty effective. I still expect that number to go up. I think Auburn can finish in the 80s there 
uh, but they've been good at that so far. Let's take a look at what South Alabama does. Again, this game is going to be played on Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Central Time in the Mitchell Center on the campus of South Alabama down in Mobile. Uh, Television-wise, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, it's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, some of you might have that to be watching your uh, Napoli or Lecce games in Serie A or perhaps maybe uh, something in the uh, League One. If you guys are soccer fans, a lot of folks just don't have ESPN+. Plus. It's kind of a new thing they started, I think, last summer or maybe last spring uh, for just like the really obscure games, which I guess this counts. Uh, South Alabama's 2-0 and this year. They have a win over our, some screwball team like Pikeville, Kentucky or something, and then they also beat Southern Miss the other night. Uh, in a pretty good game, but there's a really interesting thing to note about South Alabama. We'll get to that. This is an unusual group of skills for a team. I've not seen this before. Um, their best skill on the offensive end is cutting. Um, you hardly ever see that. Now, Auburn's a pretty good cut team in general, but this is a lot of opportunities. 13 possessions so far for 22 points. 1.692. They're in the 99 percentile in cutting. I think they're number three in the country out of 350 teams or whatever. Uh, and they have one dude in particular who's just really, really good at that. His name's Chad Lott, number 21. Got to keep an eye on in this game. I think he has 16 of those points in the cutters. So uh, it's just something you have to keep an eye on. Those are guys that are moving away from the bucket. Typically, a cutter is going to be in the half court where they're doing backdoor cuts or they're doing some kind of what I would call in football a mesh concept. Uh, and you can also do that in transition where you kind of speed up or slow down and just kind of cut through. Something to keep an eye on. DHO stands for dribble handoff. It's something that Auburn does a little bit. It seems like it's specific to the opponent when they do it. Uh, last year was a very small part of their offense, but I think you would do that specifically against teams that don't switch because if they're switching across a DHO, um, particularly a team that switches well and thoughtfully and they're quick, it, it wouldn't work very well. So maybe they, they feel like they played some teams that don't switch well or whatever. Auburn generally does switch well. So I would think they're going to de-accentuate that, but they've been good at it so far this year. Pick and roll ball handler, just rolling off screens up high. You either drive or you shoot. 50 percentile, eh, you know, solid. And then in transition, you can see they've had some trouble. 33 possessions for 32 points. Uh, they're in the 43 percentile uh, in that type of play. Um, a little bit better than Auburn statistically, and I think it's something that they like to do. They just haven't done a great job of it yet. Um, but they have a veteran team. You think they might be better at that. Uh, 43 percentile in transition, and then 88 percent in the half court, largely because of these cuts and DHOs. They've been really, really successful with that. Um, I will say that Southern Miss zoned this team uh, into oblivion, basically. Uh, this team, I thought this game was going to get away from Southern Miss. They went to zone. South Alabama didn't handle it very well. I thought they went into like a de facto jump shooting mode, which is kind of what a zone wants you to do. They want them to just kind of panic and start heaving away from 23 feet which is what south alabama did they didn't do well uh, they were able to hang in that game because they were getting to the line um later on they still couldn't get the ball down or get good looks they just kind of went driving downhill and were able to get some fouls and there was a huge foul disparity uh in that game as far as free throws i think south alabama ended up going like 23 of 26 of the line and southern miss was like five of eight or something and that was the difference in the game so um I would think that Auburn would zone this team a little bit. Auburn is not a big zone defense team. They did it last year against Dayton, and they had some situational uh, deals where they did some zone. Chad Pruitt, who's uh, an assistant on the staff, was the guy who kind of implemented that. Um, I would be surprised if we did not see that against South Alabama just to kind of feel it out. And it also gives Auburn an opportunity to run that and use it and just kind of get used to it if there's situations down the road where they need to use it. Because you never know when stuff like that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? All right, so that's the deal. Auburn, again, 2-0 and with the big win over Davidson. Uh, the things they did really well in that game, they got out in transition, did a great job. Uh, in the Georgia Southern game, they were .696 points per possession in transition. In this last game, they were 1.067. So they were like 40% more efficient in, in the uh, transition game. And their cutters, huge, huge improvement in cutters. Uh, they went 0-4. Uh, in the first game. This last game, 11 possessions, 14 points. Uh, if you could keep doing that, you would be among the national elite in that. I know, I'm trying to think, D'Angelo had a couple of those. Okoro had a cutter bucket. Anthony had a cutter uh, and one. Javon had a cutter and one. 
just rolling off without the ball in your hands, getting downhill, ball gets fed to you, you do something with it. I think Auburn's got some ability there. We mentioned Jamal Johnson on a previous show that he was really good at that at Memphis. He hasn't been very good at that yet, but I think Jamal's still just kind of getting used to what, you know, he hadn't played in a while, sat out last year. I think he's just rusty. I still think he's going to be a big contributor, even though you haven't heard much about him to this point. All right, guys, so that's a wrap for our latest video. Uh, just to refresh you, Auburn at South Alabama, Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, no, 7 o'clock Central Time on ESPN+. Plus. And, of course, we're going to have full coverage here at AuburnSports.com for you if you don't have a chance to actually watch them in person down there in Mobile. Uh, definitely check us out at AuburnSports.com. If you're not a subscriber, now is the time. And we're getting into football season. Georgia game coming up. It's kind of do or die for Malzahn. He's really got to get some of these big wins. And now would be a good time for that. <laughs> so check us out at AuburnSports.com. I'm there. Brian's there. Nate's there. Jeffrey's there. We're working all day, every day to get you the good stuff. And, of course, our message board is awesome. Until we see you next time, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.